Okay, here's the tutorial for Friday's homework. It really seriously is skill worksheet number 12 this time. The name of the game here is finding a percent of a number. Okay, this is something we've done like five million times, but just to refresh your memory, if you wanted to find a percent of a number, you need to remember that we're going to do this. Multiply. One common misconception is that you divide. Now, there are several people who may not be in our classes and may tune into this, maybe math people in general, parents, you know, observers. You know what? It's possible to use some division to help you find a percent of a number. But the, the convention that we're going to use here involves multiplication. So I'm not saying it's impossible or out of the question to use division when you find a percentage of a number. I know that you can do this. I'm not calling it impossible. But here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to multiply to find a percent of a number. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do a couple of examples. I know that I assigned you the evens, but we're going to deal with a few of the odd exercises, and I'm going to leave it up to you to do the even exercises. <coughs> so I wanted to start by looking at number three. Now, number three is for a reason, because some of you might remember from first semester that when we find a percent of a number, one easy method to do this, actually, would be to find 10% of the number first. One cool property of finding 10% of something is that you get to take that thing and scooch its decimal once to the left. I'll go ahead and demonstrate this, but this would be, we're looking for 40% of 180. Now, I know we can multiply to do this, okay? But what we'll do here is we'll, we'll in our heads, scooch this decimal mentally to the left one spot, which would represent... 10% of the number. So writing this down, 10% of 180 would be 18, and we can even put the zero in for emphasis to show you that the decimals just picked itself up and shifted itself once to the left. Why would I do this? Well, one big reason is because if I'm looking for 40%, I can easily manipulate 10% to be 40%. Here's the neat thing about it. If I wanted to write this as two equal ratios, of course, we're very familiar with that. It forms a proportion. We say, well, what's the scale factor from 10 to 40? I mean, if I know 10%, couldn't I put 10% with another 10% with another 10%, another 10%? Bottom line is, I could take four of these and find out what 40% would be. Of course, we know if we took 10% times four to get 40%, we would know that this number that we're looking for is also four times bigger than 18. Okay, so 18 times four Looks like we get 32 here, carry the 3. 4 times 1 is 4, plus the 3 is 7. Cool thing about this is this. We say 72 would have to be 40% of this original number. Now, why am I sitting here screaming about multiplying? Okay, well, here's the deal. If you want to do this in an easy situation, this next problem is not something that we can easily manipulate 10 into. I didn't say we couldn't. I said not very easily, okay? Looking at this, if we want to find 40% of a number, you need to remember that certain words in English kind of translate to certain things in math, like the word and means add. The word is is an equal sign, okay? In this case, of, do you recall what of means? Of means multiply. Let's say I have two of four. That means four and four together. That means I have eight. In other words, two times four is eight. So looking at this, I want to take 40% times 180. Here's my problem. You cannot multiply by a percent sign. Look, we can multiply by decimals. So taking into account Wednesday's homework, I'd say, well, how would you turn 40% into a decimal? Well, I know that percent means out of 100. Okay, so that'd be 40 over 100 or out of 100. That'd be 40 one hundredths. And as a decimal, 40 one hundredths is written like a so. Okay, so 40 hundredths. In other words, I took the decimal and we scooched it back twice to the left. It's this constant shifting of a decimal. I want to take 0 .40 times 180. Okay, so completing this problem, you know, I say, well, what number would you put on top? Well, you know, the common person would leave this zero here, but the lazy person like myself, well, I'm not necessarily lazy, I just value my time, might take this zero and say, you know what, it doesn't count for much anyways. Now, it doesn't matter what order I multiply these in when I stack them, but I tell you what, I have a natural tendency to want to put 180 on top of the product because it's a longer number. It's going to reduce our work when we do this product. So observing this, we say 180 times 0 0.40. Cool thing is this, also, we're multiplying by zero, which means our first set of three products is a bunch of zeros. Now, I'm done with this. Moving on to the 10 spot, we do have to build in a zero. 
so that we start off with the tens down here. If I say 4 times 0, of course, is 0. 4 times 8 is 32. Carrying this 3, you notice that you're seeing a lot of what we had done over here. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. Now, here's one thing that people often complain about. They say, well, this adds up to 0, this is 0, this is 2, this is 7. So we have 7,200. So we might make the common mistake that some people do, uh, that 40% of this number is 7,200, 7,200. But honestly, step back and think about this. Is that reasonable? What mistake have I made? I mean, that's like a lot more than 100% of this number to begin with. I thought I was looking for less than half to begin with. Here's the thing that we've done. We've forgotten to take into account that we had two digits sitting on the right-hand side of the decimal as one, in, in one of our factors here. We need to account for this or compensate by scooching the decimal back twice. And even though we have .00, we know that we still got 72. Okay, well, hey, wait, cool. I like this multiply thing. I want to keep doing it. As a matter of fact, I want to keep doing it because of this number right here. Number 11, I'm looking at it, and I notice that I'm taking 31.4% times 20. Uh, not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, mentally, it is not hard. So we'll take a look at this. Let's take 31.4% times 20, but remember, we have to write this as a decimal first. So as a decimal, this becomes 0.314 times 20. Now I'm going to station this 0.314 on top for the same reason I put 180 on top. It just happens to be the longer number. So doing so, we say 0.314 times 20. Neat thing is we're going to have a whole row of zeros here. And the other thing I want to notice is this. I want you to notice this. We might as well go ahead and underline anything that's to a right, any digits to the right of a decimal. We're going to have to compensate for those later. If I look at this and I say, well, zero times these are all zeros, and I'm done with that. We're out in the 10 spot, so we need to build in a zero. You know, I just put a little box there, so I remember that I put that there. I didn't necessarily multiply to get that. If I say 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 1 does 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. You know, checking this out, we add it up, and of course we get 0, 8. Sorry, I'm kind of writing sideways here. 2 and 6, and we needed to scooch this decimal back, not once, not twice, but a dorky word, thrice. So we notice that. 31.4% of 20 actually turns out to be 6.180 equals 6.180. And of course, if you're like me, the zero drives you nuts. You don't necessarily have to have it there. But if you don't cross it off, I can't tell you you're wrong. Okay, remember you need to multiply to find these percentages if you want to make your life a whole lot easier. And of course, if it's an easy situation, finding 10% of the number by scooching that decimal once to the left is, is a nice tack to use. Good luck.